Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Smithsonian Social Studies Online. Today, we are looking at the topic of summer. Really looking forward to this discussion with our colleagues. But before we get started, I wanted to invite you all to join us in conversation. You can use the chat box, either through YouTube or Facebook, however you're joining us today, to share your thoughts or ask questions of our presenters. We're in a chat and we're in a discussion, so we ask that you follow the guidelines of respectful conversation, close listening, and being open to ask questions. We do welcome them. And with that, I will turn it over to our host, Orlando Serrano. Hello, good morning, afternoon, evening, midnight to everybody, depending on when you decide to, to join us. Thank you for checking in with us and hearing what we have to say about today's topic, which is summer. And we are excited to have a couple of friends from across Smithsonian join us today. And the two folks who will be joining us are Ariel Gorey, who we will speak with first, and Tiffany McGettigan, uh, who will come on afterwards and share some of her thoughts. So Ariel, welcome. Thank you for being with us today. Can you please share a little bit about the work that you do over at the Museum of African American History and Culture um, to get us started? Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Arielle Gorey. I am the lead education specialist for early childhood programs at the National Museum of African American History and Culture. I design programming and educational materials for zero to eight year olds and the adults that come with them. Um, we really use our programming and our materials to support caregivers and children in thinking about race, thinking about history, thinking about culture, what that means to them, but also learning about Black history and culture as well. Um, and this year we've been doing a lot of our online programming and online resources, um, which have been a lot of fun too. Excellent. And, you know, we've gotten to see some of your resources and um, Abby can put it in the chat, but, you know, let's, you know, talking about race is a wonderful one for folks out there, like um, Ario mentioned who have young folks uh, and want to have these kinds of conversations with them on these critical issues. All right, Ariel. so we're gonna talk about summer mm -hmm. and that means lots of different things to lots of different people. There are different events, you know, get togethers that folks look forward to. When you think of summer, what do you think of? So yes, summer is coming up. Um, and like you mentioned, a lot of us, when we're thinking of summer, there's a lot of things that might come to mind. Vacation, I know students and teachers may be looking forward to some extra free time. I am personally looking forward to swimming pools and ice cream this summer, um, even though ice cream can happen all year round for me. Um, but overall, I think summer and a sense of freedom pretty much go hand in hand for a lot of people. And in the U.S., um, in the summer months, they these months are also coming with celebrations of freedom for many Americans. So most people are familiar with Fourth of July or Independence Day, which is the celebration of the United States Declaration of Independence and freedom from the rule of Britain in 1776. But some folks may not be as familiar with the holiday Juneteenth, which is also a celebration of freedom. Juneteenth takes place on June 19th and has traditionally been celebrated by African-Americans to honor when enslaved African-Americans were emancipated and particularly in Texas. So even though Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863, it wasn't until about two years later in 1865 when this information reached or was enforced in Texas, um, considering the location of the state in comparison to the location of other Southern um, slaveholding states. Um, and the lack of Union soldiers in that area, it took a long time for that um, for the Emancipation Proclamation to be enforced there. So there wasn't also there wasn't a wide distribution of information via you know television or newspaper or um, social media, of course. So finding out about this really um, was being you know delivered from person to person took a little while. So the following year and beyond, um, Juneteenth became June 19th became a date to celebrate. 
um, for formerly enslaved African Americans and the generations of African Americans to follow, like myself. Um, these celebrations can look like parties, um, celebrations of music, food, parades, family time, storytelling, um, just moments of memorial of um, ancestors as well. Um, and it's primarily been celebrated by African American communities, though it's not, um, and is not really recognized as an official national holiday yet. Um, however, people outside of the African American community seem to have really become more aware of this important holiday, possibly for some people the first time um, in the midst of the Black Lives Matter movements last year, um, recognizing that Independence Day or 4th of July in 1776 didn't mean freedom for everyone and that total freedom is still being fought for by many communities in the United States today. So when I'm thinking of summer, I'm also thinking of this idea of freedom. Yeah, no, thank you, Ariel, for bringing that up. You know, so we have these images in front of us that all include the US flag and you've opened up our conversation about summer and thinking about freedom um, as being top of mind and these two uh, dates that bookend, you know, uh, three weeks, right? Where, where different mm -hmm. folks may be thinking about freedom in different ways. Uh, can you say a little bit about these flags and the relationship um, to the conversation that you've opened up for us on how folks might think about freedom? Yeah, so when we're thinking about these different, you know, holidays in the summer celebrating freedom, it really does lead us to that question of how do you define freedom? You know, everyone may have a different way of thinking about this idea depending on your history, your culture, um, your family's experience uh, living in the United States. So you might have, um, you know, depending on when you look at this same flag, um, for many Americans, you know, the red, white, and blue, the stripes, the stars is really a symbol of freedom. Um, but again, depending on your experience here, you may have more of an expanded um, definition of what it really means to be free and how this flag represents that idea or not yet. Um, I think that at my museum, the National Museum of African American History and Culture, our collection really represents this complex relationship to the flag and the idea of freedom. And when you then combine it with the Smithsonian collection at large, um, you get this really interesting multifaceted perspective on the flag and a more diverse definition of freedom. So in these images here, you'll see the flag's been used in a lot of ways throughout the Smithsonian. You'll see photographs, objects, art. Um, that first image there um, is a flag being, it's from my museum, um, and it's a flag being held during the Selma March to Montgomery, which was um, essentially a protest of the violence and discrimination towards Black people trying to vote. Um, which was a right of American citizens, including black voters. Um, in the middle there, you'll see um, Russell Means, who's a Native American activist wearing the flag as a garment. And then, um, and that's from the portrait gallery. And then that last image there from American history um, is a picture of Arab American um, uh, immigrant children. Um, and they're really, you know, decked out in this, flag. And when I'm looking at these three different groups of people, it's it, it's really a moment to reflect on and think about what the flag is meaning to these different people mm -hmm. and how are their experiences here in the U.S., how have they been different? And what does this then add to your own understanding of freedom and reflect for yourself? What does the flag mean to me and why? Is it simply a symbol or a pattern that you you know, kind of get really excited about for 4th of July? Is it something you return to throughout the year and you feel a lot of pride in? Um, or is it something that maybe has a lot deeper, more mm -hmm. heavy um, feelings that come with it? Yeah. Um, go ahead. Um, I was gonna say, I, I do wanna remind folks um, that you can, when if you're in Learning Lab, you can always click on the information here 
on the side to find where um, you can get more information about some of these particular objects that Ariel has brought to share with us. Uh, and you know, I appreciate the way in which you've laid out how the flag can be used differently by different peoples um, to reflect varying degrees of affinity for what the flag might mean to them and their personal experiences that they've encountered as people living in this place we call the United States. And I've also appreciated the way that you, you mentioned on a couple of occasions, some folks may or may not have full freedom yet. Like this, you know, incomplete uh, idea of freedom for particular communities. And we're gonna change here to another slide. And can you please share a little bit about how some folks are using the flag to express their desires, uh, their commitments to both this country and to the idea of freedom, generally speaking? Yes. Um, so when we're looking at the flag um, in the previous one, I think there was a lot of, in each of those, there is this sense of pride in a way. It seems like they're they're being held or worn as a, as a hope um, mm -hmm. to me when I'm looking at those um, images. And then when in looking at these um, objects from a few different museum collections, it's really a state, these could be different statements about what we believe freedom is or what freedom is not and what um, it, what needs to change exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and so with the um, blanket there from the American History Museum, um, the wheelchair symbol is made up of the stars of the flag. And it's really, you know, bringing attention to the need for equal rights and freedoms for people with disabilities, sparking us to look and think about, you know, what is freedom for a person with disabilities in the United States looked like. Um, then we have a pin there in the middle, which is um, a really beautiful brooch, I think. And it's made up of these jewels and it's really sparkly. And to me, it seems that someone wearing this might be really wearing it with a sense of pride and love. And maybe this is something they're wearing just for a holiday. Maybe it's something they have on them often. Um, and then the last um piece there is a pin from the Harriet Tubman home um, and that's an image of Harriet Tubman there and then the ribbon has the American flag on it and when I'm looking at this I I find this this pairing very fascinating I'm um, just thinking about what did being in the United States actually mean for Harriet Tubman um, even though the United States was technically technically a free country she was enslaved and she was working to help other enslaved people in this free country who weren't experiencing the freedom mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that at the time many white Americans were. Um, and so I think that there's a lot of different objects throughout the Smithsonian collection connected to the American flag. I really mm -hmm. encourage folks to um, use Learning Lab to find them. I had a really uh, fun time kind of seeing the different ways that it um, comes in, in everybody's collection across the Smithsonian. Um, but I also want to conclude with the acknowledgement that not only do our you know, summer plans change as we grow older and maybe move and do different things in our lives, um, but also our understanding of freedom and our relationship to the American flag and holidays like the 4th of July um, and Juneteenth. And so the idea of freedom, you know, is different. It, it feels different depending on who you are you know, where you're from, your identity, your age. And so, you know, I'm inviting folks to really think about what can you do this summer with your free time to, you know, enjoy that, to embrace that, um, and thinking about how you're going to be celebrating these holidays if you do um, celebrate them. But I'm also encouraging folks to really think about and define um, freedom for yourself and think about, too, what do you, what can you do to help make sure that we all experience that same level of freedom? Um, and when you're looking around, are you noticing that people are also having that same freedom or are you having a little bit more or less than somebody? And how can you change situations in which one group of people experiences more freedom than others? So each year that you're celebrating 4th of July or as you're learning maybe more about celebrating Juneteenth if you don't already, <laughs> Um, be open to thinking about what your celebrations of freedom look like and why they're really important to you, 
as well as um, our country as a whole. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Arielle, for bringing these objects together and for helping us think about summer and um, freedom and how it can look differently and feel differently for different folks. We're going to let you go for a second. We'll bring you back in a few minutes. And we're now happy to welcome our second guest, uh, Tiffany um, again. Tiffany, can you please share a little bit about um, the work that you do, where you do that work, and continue this conversation about summer and freedom and, and how you think about it, please. Absolutely. Hi, everybody. And thank you, Orlando and Ariel. Um, I am an educator at the Hirshhorn Museum and Sculpture Garden. And we, um, in my work, I work with kids um, who are really young, like Arielle, and um, also teenagers. Uh, so we work with a wide range of kids and uh, try to support them. Um, I don't work with the same kind of historic objects and artifacts as, as my friends here do. Um, the Hirshhorn is an art museum, um, and we're the National Museum of Modern Art. Uh, so many of the artists whose work we collect and exhibit are alive right now. Um, and in this way, uh, the artists that we work with are often responding to history in real time um, right now. Um, so that's really exciting to me uh, that that we're we're able to sort of uh, work with artists who are alive and and responding to to history as it's happening. Um, in terms of my own my own personal experiences with freedom um, and summer, um, like Arielle, I really do um, associate summer with freedom. Um, I have a lot of happy childhood memories um, celebrating the 4th of July fireworks um, over Lake Huron in northern Michigan, which is where I grew up. Um, but um, like Arielle shared, many people's ideas about freedom change as they get older. Um, during my life, I've traveled around the world. I've spent 20 years working in schools and museums in Washington, D.C., which is you know, the capital of the United States. Um, so these life experiences have shaped and changed how I think about freedom. Um, and I know um, I'll continue to learn and involve my thinking and, and encourage all of you to do the same. Thank you, Tiffany. And we're excited to, to learn about um, the different artifacts that you brought with us, with you today to share with us. Can you please start off with this one? And let, we saw that it was titled The Flag. Uh, yeah. Yeah, th this is great. So, you know, as, as I mentioned um, just a, a while ago, um, art really has the power to speak to and respond um, to our times. Um, so I, I took a look through the Hirshhorn's collection and um, this is one of two artworks that I'd like to talk about. So this one is called The Flag. Um, and I'd like to invite everyone who's here to just take a moment to really look closely um, what do you see? Let your eyes wander up and down and side to side. And if you have any observations, you can pop them into the chat. So you are probably noticing uh, that the colors are mostly red, white, and blue, uh, the same colors as the American flag. Um, but you might've also noticed that there's not actually a flag. There's no stars, there's no stripes. The artwork um, isn't even oriented like a flab. It, it's it's uh, up and down as a portrait rather than uh, side to side, right? Um, you might be noticing that there's lines uh, that look a little bit like faces and that there's a lot of them. Um, so what do you think that might mean? Why might the artist have all these faces, red, white, and blue faces sort of intertwined so I'll tell you a little bit more about the artist. Uh, his name was Herbert Gentry. He liked to be called Herb. And he said, I paint people I've met throughout most of the world, American and African-American who are my friends. The artist was uh, part of a group of African-Americans uh, artists who lived in Paris, France, uh, just after World War II. And he traveled and lived between different cities in Europe uh, and New York City for most of his life. Uh, so his experiences were really international um, and his sort of art reflects the experiences that he had um, both as an American and an American living abroad and, and working with this, this group of African-American artists who um, also lived abroad at that time. Um, he painted this flag um, in the early 1990s um, the imagery uh, is of 
people he he knew, um, as well as African masks. In this way, um, the painting evokes people from his life, his friends, and the ancestors whose lives and cultures were a part of his identity. So it's a really, really interesting sort of um, depiction of, of the flag and thinking about what that means to, to one individual. Yeah, it's, it, that's a very interesting and profound meditation. Um, mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the, the fact that, you know, this, the flag or flags that we think of aren't, you know, symbolize and represent all these people, right? And, and, and these groups of people and communities um, who make up the constituents that the flag represents. Um, thank you for, for bringing that to us today. And I, it, who's Herb? Let us know where he's at. <laughs> yeah, so I love this photograph. Um, this, uh, this is a picture of Herb hanging out with many of his artist friends. Um, he's the second on the left. We don't know the date um, or the location that this photo was taken, um, but they are all enjoying some good food. Um, they look happy, they're dressed up, and there's some artwork behind them. So I would like to think that maybe this took place at some sort of an art opening, exhibit opening, some, something like that, but we, we can't say for sure. Uh, so second on left, and he's pictured there with a group of his artist friends. Just just so cool to think about how um, how the people in our lives um, really influence um, mm -hmm. our experiences. Yeah, I I mean, I I like to think that it's at an art show also, but it also reminds <laughs> me of like you know, sun after church on Sundays like, <laughs> during what, what we would call the afterglow time, where people would oftentimes be. bring snacks. You know, you never or eighth grade graduation. We don't know, but I like seeing <laughs> herb with a plate full of food. That's exciting. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're gonna turn our attention here to a second uh, flag that you brought to share with us. And like you mentioned earlier, a lot of the work that is at Hirshhorn is speaking to um, our more current contemporary moment. Mm -hmm. Share the information that you have about this this video flag. Yeah, this is a really different representation of the flag. So I'm gonna again, I'm gonna invite everyone to just take a moment to look closely. Again, look up and down, look side to side. Uh, notice the colors and the patterns. Uh, you might also notice that there's many rectangles. See if you can make a guess how many you think there are. Um, I'm gonna also ask you to notice that a lot of the images are repeating. So we see the same images over and over again. And then Orlando, if you could kind of scroll toward yeah. the bottom. Yep. I know you're zoomed in right now. <laughs> Maybe zoom out. And if you scroll towards the bottom, there we go. If everyone can kind of look at the very bottom, you might notice those little circles at the bottom. Those are wheels. So I want you to think about what, what might this artwork be made from? Hmm. It's not a painting. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna look at one more and then I'll reveal what it is. <laughs> so Orlando, if you can actually go to the next slide. Absolutely. This next slide features an activity, but if you um, click into it, into that link, we'll get a different perspective of this artwork. Thank you for everyone's patience. And then just scroll down a little bit. There we go, right there. All right, so we're looking at another, another view. And you'll notice that we see all these rectangles again. We still can see the wheels at the very bottom. Mm -hmm. Probably notice that in the upper left, there's still that same blue section, right? But the images have changed. Um, yeah. So, now in that blue section, we see a black and white photograph of a man, and you might recognize him. That's uh, President Harry Truman. And then you see that uh, there's also these red re repeated images over and over. So this is the same artwork, um, but this artwork is actually um, made from 70 television monitors. Um, so there's 10 uh, across and seven down. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's called Video Flag. And when you see this um, at, the, at the Hirshhorn, when it's on view, 
each television on its own is constantly displaying a rotating set of videos. So oh. right now we're looking at still images of the artwork and we're just glimpsing a moment. Um, but when viewed as a whole, the visuals come together and they make um, a feeling of the American flag. Um, and when, when it's um, actually on, on view, the monitors um, are changing really quickly and you can see different flag visuals sort of flashing at you. Um, so you get this constantly changing imagery, um, which makes you kind of stop and think about that combination of images that the artist has chosen. Um, one other thing I'm gonna say is that this, this artwork video flag is about eight feet tall, um, taller than the tallest person you know, and 12 feet long. <laughs> Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the artist as well, if that would be helpful. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was gonna ask. Can you can you share a little bit about is it Nam June Pike? And, yes. And yeah, there, so the, there's thoughts behind this. Yeah, absolutely. So um so this artwork um is by uh, American artist named Nam June Pike. Um he was born in Korea, um, but he fled in 1950 when the Korean War began. Um he moved to Hong Kong, Japan, and Germany, and then finally he settled in New York City. Um, he's considered the founder of the video art movement. Mm. Uh, so basically he used television as a medium. A lot of us think about using paint as a medium or um, sculpting, right? Um, but he's actually using televisions um, to create his work. Um, and he started doing this in the 1960s and he's created um, work uh, using television monitors um, for many, many decades. Um, he thinks of this as a collage. You've maybe, you've made a collage with, you know, with paper and different cutouts. Um, but what he's doing is he's selecting um, moving images and displaying them together like a collage. Um, so some of the images he chose here um, are Stars and Stripes, um, a sequence of American presidents beginning with Harry Truman, ending with Bill Clinton, Clinton and um, also segments from broadcast news. Um, he uses the television as well as another symbol of America that makes us um, look closely um, about how we think about the media's depictions of being American. So there's a lot of um, symbolism both in the images and um, the format that he's using here. Very interesting. Thank you, Tiffany, for sharing these two more iterations of the flag <laughs> and how folks you know, are drawing on their own personal lived experiences to use the flag as a meditative space to, to share their thoughts about what it means to be in this country that we call the United States. Uh, we're gonna ask Ariel to come back on screen. And um, as we close out our last episode of Social Studies Online for this season, we're gonna play a small game called, What Is It? And it's very simple. I'm gonna scroll through some images, show it to you, and ask you all to identify what it is and its relationship to our conversation today about freedom and summer and any thoughts that you might have about these particular <laughs> objects. Um, any questions? No, sounds good. All uh, right. <laughs> y'all do fine, y'all do fine. All right. All right, so what's this? It's a s'more. Is it? it is a <laughs> s'more, all right? Now, I have a question for, for you two. Are you pro or anti-s'more? I am I am pro marshmallows. Um, I do not usually like combining foods, um, so I just I would eat all three separately, um, but not so. I guess anti s'more. I guess anti -smore. <laughs> pro marshmallow, pro graham cracker, and chocolate. Anti. -smore. <laughs> yeah. I am very okay. pro s'more. <laughs> Well, it's funny. I, I appreciate both your perspectives on this because those both live in our house. Um, my partner also does not care for them all together necessarily. <laughs> and so it's funny that she, I'll let her know she's not the only one. Uh, and I hope that you all enjoy some s'mores or chocolate, <laughs> marshmallow, and graham crackers this summer. All right, you're right. That was a s'more. Our next one, what is it? Uh, water balloons. All right. Any? Do either of you have any recollections of water balloons? I have, I'm, I'm a parent, so I have a lot of recollections of very slowly filling water balloons. Um, <laughs> so I'm very appreciative of the new kind in which you can fill a lot at one time. 
-hmm. I think that's a great current innovation. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We're gonna have to talk about that offline at some point. I don't know if we can fill up a, several at, at once. Yeah, there's there's a new there's a new model of water balloons that you can fill oh. up many at once instead of one at a time. It's great. <laughs> Okay. I always got frustrated when they would break in my hand. I was getting ready to throw them at someone. I was like, ah, oh, I got wet, <laughs> not the other person. All right, next one. What is it, folks? A, a slip and slide. A slip and slide indeed. Now, I'll share one. I did not have the smoothest of yards and my parents tried to get one of these <laughs> for us. Folks, that was not a pleasant experience. That did not get much use. We turned our attention very quickly to just using a hose instead and the aforementioned <laughs> water balloons. All right, we've got one more. All right. Ooh, Symphony Vino. Oh, I don't know, some kind of like fruit drink? It does, mm. yes, it is fruit related. It's yes, a, it's a mango. It is mango. And is it tahin on it or? It is tahin, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. This is very regionally specific. Um, but this is a raspado, which is kind yeah. of like, mm -hmm. like an icy or shaved ice, mm -hmm. but with mango and tahin, which is a mix of chili, salt, and lime. And oh, delicious. full transparency, I just put this on this for me because I want one. It's really hot today <laughs> and I'd appreciate it. And I've got to figure out a way to get one. Um, but I think I think that's a, definitely a symbol for me of like, uh, for me, like Mexican summertime is this is a definitely a treat during that time in California. Yep. And I well, know you, Orlando, you're, you're, uh, <laughs> you can relate to that. <laughs> Absolutely. And for folks, if you happen to be in the Washington DC or Maryland, Virginia area, they're there they are around look for them on your local street corners and you may luck out to find one but as we close out our time together ariel tiffany do you have any um something that you're looking forward to this summer Ooh, um i think i i'm looking forward to this everything that you put on them on this, <laughs> this slide, um, like you're making me want to count down a little bit quicker um, to get there. But I think this summer is going to be really interesting, just being a year, you know, after um, this the quarantine that we've all been in. And so I, I'm, I don't know. I feel very, I don't know, optimistic, but also like wondering. Like I'm very curious, like what you know, what this summer is going to look like. Um, that's what I'm kind of thinking about. How will it be the same or different? Yeah, yeah. Tiffany? Yeah, I, I agree with Ariel. I think that um, this summer might be the restart of some of the traditions that um, that we we had in past summers. Um, gathering together with with friends for you know family for barbecues, um, taking trips to see see other people and spend time together. So I'm, I'm looking forward to all those things. Reconnecting. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Tiffany, and thank you, Ariel. And as you do, for perhaps restart some of those traditions. I do encourage you to think about some of the how your traditions may or may not be similar to those of your neighbors around you. How concepts of freedom may or may not be similar mm -hmm. um, to your neighbors around you. And I'm going to turn it over to Abby to close us out. And here's some more information, and she'll wrap it up for us. Thank you, Arielle and Tiffany. I, I was so excited for this conversation and it certainly um, it lived up to everything I was hoping for. And it was thought provoking. And like you said, Arielle, a good moment to think about what's coming next in our year and how, how we might reconnect or think about our engagement and our opportunities with, our, with others and our communities. So thank you for that. Yes, if you, on the screen here, you see a link to access all the resources that you've seen during this presentation today, during our episode. Um, it's also in the chat, a direct link to this Learning Lab collection. And we are sad to say we won't be back until the fall. It's, as we've talked about, it's summer. So with many of you, we're taking the summer off and we are looking forward to returning again fall 2021 um, with some more exciting content, really wonderful guests to join us and looking forward to chatting with you all again. So we wanna say happy almost summer. Thank you for being here and we wish you all very well. Bye, Bye everyone. everyone.